you know, when I started contemplating marriage, the Lord asked me, what is the purpose of marriage? And the thoughts of the things that were taught began to run through my mind. You know, we hear things like, marry who you love. Um, it's about happiness. Make sure you are happy. And all of these are very beautiful. But the Lord said to me, he said, does he sit, does marriage sit on these things? Because you can be happy with somebody that is not going in the direction of your destiny. If you have not found your destiny. Because the things that make men happy are strange. <laughs> The things that make men happy, they are strange. And God began to give me some secret things that I've never heard preached anywhere. You know, he told me the first purpose of marriage is to give you the privilege to be conformed to the image of God. He said, that is why you will not find who you want to marry on the street. You will walk on that person. You will cultivate that person. And while you are cultivating that person, yourself will be cultivated in the process. So you may be looking for a woman that is patient. Meanwhile, her impatience is what will help you to learn temperance and endurance. So when God points at your wife, your wife may not have patience. So if you are looking for marriage to be happy, and you think happiness is about patience, you will miss your wife. Because the idea is that you will be conformed to the image of Christ. Meanwhile, the endurance that you don't have is our patience that will teach you that endurance. So God will deliberately allow you to marry her, and it may take you six years to cultivate endurance. And you will learn it by teaching her. That's a school of the spirit. So he said, the, the, a higher purpose of marriage is for you to be conformed to the image of God. So that happiness will be, will be captured in fulfillment, not in excitement. It is when you have cultivated her and the glory in her spirit begins to emanate. That's when you'll be fulfilled. It's in that fulfillment that you'll be happy. And I, I never saw it anywhere. So I began to, you know, I used to love tall and fair damsels. <laughs> and my goal of happiness was to find a woman without blemish. <laughs> when I went to pray, I gazed into the spirit and I contemplated a tall and elegant damsel, flawless in expression. <laughs> he said, what I'm looking for is for you to be conformed to the image of God. So it changed my paradigm. So when the purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse is inevitable. He told me the second purpose of marriage is to preserve divine heritage. He said the reason you could trace Jesus back to Adam is because God trapped that divine order in a bloodline. So when men hide things, they hide them in a bank. But when God hides things, he hides it in men. So the choices of marriage is to help transfer eternal ordinations from one generation to another. So it is God's way of hiding dimensions of the spirit. So God will prefer you marry someone with a godly heritage than to marry a, 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 a diva. Because God is trapping an ordination. And only in such vessels can eternal ordination be captured. I said, wow. <laughs> I was not ready to marry. If I married five years ago, my wife would have been a goddess. But my ministry would have ended. It would have ended by now. <laughs> he said the third purpose of marriage is worship. He said because it is in finding your wife that you will learn how to bend your will. Because worship is not a good song. Worship is the ability to conform to the will of the father. So it is no, it's not what I desire. It's what you desire. Not my will but thine. And he said, it's a marriage that you will discover that. <laughs> I said, wow. So when the purpose of a thing is not known, the abuse is inevitable. He said, the fourth purpose of marriage is so that you can learn the mystery of oneness. That's the mystery that holds the Godhead together. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. The ability to live and become one. And that was why he said, for the woman, love is submission. And they say, for the man, love is sacrifice. So everything the woman has, she relinquishes it. And it looks as if she's vulnerable. And then everything the man has, it commands the man to lavish it on the woman. So at the end of the day, nobody owns nothing. And as they grow on that corridor, a point come, 
the woman is lost in the man and the man is lost in the woman so the mystery of divinity can be manifested in their home so when you step into their family their family become heaven on earth because god dwells there you know when you come on the altar you can coordinate yourself you can't do that with your wife your wife knows you so when you are trying to be to act wise they will say this man is a hypocrite i know <laughs> And when you look at the face of the woman, you can tell who that man is. When oneness is achieved, alignment is achieved. So that man, his communication frequency with his wife will become heightened. When he looks at that woman, he is saying much, much, much more than words can ever articulate. That's a mystery. It's only in the Godhead that you find such mystery. That the son can be on earth. He knows what the father is doing in heaven. It's oneness. He said the fifth purpose is priesthood. He said, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable.